Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishal. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to another podcast of my channel and I hope from the thumbnail you get to know about the topic of this podcast. In this podcast, we will be discussing about how interview happens for scientific officer in Bhava Atomic Research Center. Again, for this video, my guest is Sobhajai Sarkar who is a M.Tech CSE student at IIT Madras and the upcoming scientific officer in Bhava Atomic Research Center. Now, in the last video, Sobhajai shared his experience of pursuing M.Tech in IIT Madras. So, if you haven't watched that podcast yet, the link will be in the description. You can go and check it out. Now, in this video, he'll be sharing his experience of attempting interviews for scientific officer in Bhava Atomic Research Center. So, he will explain in detail the admission process in BART and also, you know, how you can pursue M.Tech from IITs uh, after joining BART. So, what are the options that is available? So, everything detail he will be sharing in this particular video. So, if you are someone who is aspiring for BAR, uh, who, who will be appearing for BAR for interview in, in upcoming months, this video will be really helpful for uh, you people. So, if you want to know detail about it, please stay tuned this video till end. And before starting the video, as I always say, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly. And if you have liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Without further delay, let's start into today's video. Okay, now coming to the second part. So, so Bhusachi also has uh, secured a place in Bark. So, if you just say what is Bark and what, how was the uh, admission process there after GATE? I mean, how you get, uh, get admission into uh, BRC or Bark? Is first of all stands for Bhava Atomic Research Center, and it is situated in uh, Trombe, Mumbai. The okay. BRC was established around uh, I think 1954 by Doctor Homi Jahangir Bhava, and uh, this is a research organization. Like in our uh, in India, we have many research organizations for different domains. Like uh, for defense, for defense we have DRDO. For uh, space, we have ISRO. Then uh, for uh, atmospheric researches, we have NARL. So similarly in BRC, the it's also a research organization where research goes uh, where research is done on in the nuclear energy, in the nuclear energy, nuclear engineering, nuclear science fields. So this is an organization which mainly focuses on uh, nuclear energy and nuclear science. Not only that, it's a multidisciplinary research organization. Here, not other than uh, nuclear science. Uh, research goes on the material science, computer, uh, chemical engineering also. And some of the research goes on the computer science also. So okay. in, it's a it's a multidisciplinary research organization. So uh, if you want to, uh, like if I say specifically for computer science also, like uh, research if I say in, uh, in the field of image processing, then big data, also in terms of cryptography and uh, sometimes for uh in data processing and all those fields also some research goes on in here and after gate i mean what how, what are the ways to get into brc as a scientific officer post or uh, getting into brc there are mainly two ways uh one is via gate score suppose you have a very good gate score then you can apply via gate score and then you can get selected for the interview another way is a uh, cbd test computer based test so uh, you have to give a uh, the BRC itself organizes a computer based test and have to sit have to apply and set for the examination and if you are selected you are called for the interview. So the syllabus is this, same. Gate syllabus. To some extent it is same. There are some minor like little bit changes are there, but mostly these levels are the same. Most. But little bit changes are there here and there. Almost same. So after uh, so you can get through by a gate score or CBT uh, your CBT test. So after you get in, then there is this uh, interview, a BRC interview, where uh, see uh, until now everything is done. Like uh, from there on, after you get into interview, you will be um, just based on the interview score and everything. Until you just okay. the, your gate score or CBT score was until interview only. From next on, you will be just based on the interview score. So then you have to give the interview, and uh, after if you uh, perform very well and uh, clear the interview. Then uh, finally, you would be called for uh, the uh, called for the OCS for training. Or if you are willing, if you got any seat in, in IIT, like IIT Madras or IIT Bombay, then you can request for uh, de- um, for allowing you to continue there for the MTech for two years, and then later on join the organization. So that's how you can join okay. the uh, So you have chosen the second path. I mean, you have chosen to complete your MTech from IIT, and then you will be joining after your MTech. Yes. 
So if I clarify a little bit, in for DRC there are two uh, schemes. One is OCS, one is DGFS. And OCS is like an orientation uh, where uh, after your interview is done, you will be going to BRC Mumbai uh, or maybe in other uh, in other DI unit for your training purpose. So you'll be having a one year of training, and after that, uh, based on your performance, you would be uh, you'd be uh, you'd be uh, provided uh, opportunities in multiple DI units. See, the thing is that BRC uh, actually comes under a parent organization that is DA. Okay, DA. and uh, DA and under DA there are lots of other organizations like IGCAR, which is in uh, Tamil Nadu, then RRCAT in Indore, then VCC in Kolkata. Uh, so there are multiple DA organizations. And what BRC does, BRC as a whole, it conducts the entire uh, recruitment procedure for all of the DA organizations. So Correct. after, so once you are done uh, with the training process. You would be placed in one of these DA units based on your performance. Yeah. Yes, and you would be then uh, you be initially you'd be joining as a scientific officer C in here. So th okay. this this is what this is what is for the OCS. Now for the DGFS, what happens? It is slightly different. In DGFS, first of all, you have to secure uh, seats in any DA unit like DA institutes. One is for us uh, DA institutes are IIT Bombay or IIT Madras. So if by your or by your gate score, if you can secure any seat in IIT Bombay or IIT Madras, then uh, you have to request to uh, the BRC. Like initially, you'll be getting an offer letter for the OCS only. Okay. Now after after you get the OCS, OCS offer letter, you have to request to BRC that I have got this. Uh, I have also secured a seat in uh, IIT Madras or IIT Bombay, and I'd love to pursue my MTech. So. They will say, okay, we will look into it. Then they have some internal uh, meetings and all they are having. Then they decide internally that whether this candidate will be allowed for uh, MTech or they, they should, should join. So if uh, they allow, then you can continue pursuing your MTech or else you have to join or if you're willing to join, else you can continue your MTech anyways. So that's how it happens. So in DGFS, after the, if, you're, if you're allowed for DGFS, then you'll be con continuing for two years, two years of MTech after the MTech completes. Then you'll be having training. Then you'll be joining in uh, the DA. And and uh, one more thing I want to know here is how is your interview experience uh, for anybody who uh, inter uh, interviewed for uh, Bark? I mean, you said the interview will happen, but if you just uh, explain a bit, how was the interview experience? It was a really great experience. First of all, uh, as I've heard, uh, BRC is one of the most toughest interview uh, in like I would say. And being there, I experienced that. And I think really, it is a really uh, tough, really tough interview, because there you'll be grilled for around like one uh, one hour minimum. For me, it is one hour forty minutes. So they, the scientists there, the panel will be sitting there. They would be like assessing you in depth, your core. They will check a core knowledge, how much concept you are having. So they will check and every everything, whatever you think you speak, they will have cross question you against that. So they, okay. initially they start from basic, maybe some normal, simple question like what is a pointer? And if we say something like, okay, pointer, you said something, he will go on deep, much more deep, much more deep. Keep on digging, digging, digging. So they keep on checking your skills until they're satisfied that, yeah, you have a really good grasp on your skills and you are uh, really you have a good, really great knowledge on your topics, whatever you are uh, taken for. And they have asked from gate syllabus only, right? I mean, or some other domain also nothing as such like initially what they say is that uh as per their trend they ask us to select any five subjects in general like they ask okay, okay. Uh, give us your best subjects so we mentioned the five subjects uh mainly and uh write it in a corner of the board and they can randomly ask any question from that they ask like anything they can start with and we can keep on asking you they can even interchange like uh, in between multiple subjects and ask you questions as well. Like it's up to them how they ask. So yeah, this all. five actually is a starting point. The favorite subject they ask, this is a starting point. Then after some uh, time it's random. They ask mainly within those subjects only, but within like they might ask concepts directly. If I say I chose subjects like OS uh, or OS and network, maybe OS, uh, C++ and uh, DS, then they might combine this and ask some questions to you. So it might happen, or maybe they can switch from one question to another one topic to another topic. It might happen. It depends on them how they take it. 
Okay, so uh, my two uh, two questions will be there. First of all, are you getting the normal scholarship uh, because you know you are already a Burke employee? Uh, so the, in your IIT Madras M Tech uh, curriculum, are you getting the normal scholarship that other students get, or you are getting salary from Burke? We actually not get any. Uh, actually, whatever we get, we we get stipend from BRC. So at a time, okay. we, we we would be getting only a single stipend. And uh, so, in uh, IIT Madras, I'm getting a stipend from a BRC. I'm not getting a stipend from uh, IIT Madras Institute. Okay. Yes. And second thing, you are not allowed to appear for placement, I guess. You know, yes. As uh, actually, I'm not quite clear about this. I'm not, uh, to be honest, I don't know, but in general, I haven't uh, sat for any uh, placement or any internship, but I'm not sure if it is allowed or not. I think there will be some bonding, uh, maybe some bond you have signed before joining IIT Madras. I mean, for anybody who are coming from Bar to IIT Madras join, probably they have signed you in some document, maybe. Uh, they are probably it's written, I don't know. Maybe there will be something like that. Yeah, in the, we have signed a bond and there it mentioned that uh, we have will be joining there after the two years uh, of uh, okay. like two years M Tech will be joining there, and we'll be having a three years of bond after joining something like that. Ah, uh, I mean that uh, I kind of implicitly says that you can't go with other. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. We can say that maybe uh, implicitly it might indicate that you are not. Uh, you shouldn't sit for eligible. Any? Yeah, any eligible. Yeah, I, I, this is I think common for even uh, people people who are coming from DID or ISRO after four years of service, if they come for MTech, uh, they also have these kind of bonds that they will be getting salary from ISRO, they will not get stipend from institute and they are not eligible to appear for any placement because after MTech, they have to go back and continue service for three years. Okay, and, uh, great. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, we get a lot of idea about BRC also and at the same time IIT Madras also. So thank you again, Sobhasachi, for participating in this podcast. I mean, we get, gained a lot of insight from you, uh, both about IIT Madras, life at IIT Madras for during your MTech and uh, how you got selected in BRC. And I hope my subscribers or my the upcoming students also will, will be knowledgeable from, from this uh, podcast. So thank you again for participating in this. So yeah, that's it, guys. That's it about this podcast. I hope from this podcast, whatever Subhasachi has shared, his experiences, it will be really helpful for those students who are aspiring for joining Bark as a scientific officer. I think the interview experiences, the admission process, and how you can join different IITs for MTech after becoming a scientific officer in Bark. I think everything is clear now if you have watched the full podcast. So if you have any question or query, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer it there. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, again, I'm saying please subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with other people. That's it about this video. I'll be meeting in the next video. Until then, bye.